back to Marquette, Michigan. As we get set for the Olympic Games in Vancouver, just three months away, this is the ISU World Cup final chance for these athletes. Final day, final event. Men's 5,000 meter relay. The Americans will start in lane one. There are four skaters from each team on the track. We're looking right now at Travis Jayner. The three skaters skating with him will be Simon Cho, who we haven't seen yet, who's just skating the relay, Anthony Labello, and of course, Apollo Ono, who will be anchoring the team, skating the last two laps. So again, every skater goes on the track seven or eight times. The, actually, the first skater and the second skater who go out skate eight times. The third and fourth skate seven times. One and a half lap exchanges. And the women's 3,000 meter relay really is a sprint. It's 27 laps. They only go out a few times each. This race, we can expect to start off a little slower. It's still a quick race, but build up and build up. And with about 3,000 meters to go, 27 laps, we can really start to see some fireworks. So 5,000 meters in total, 45 laps, a bunch of exchanges, a bunch of chaos. And on the women's side, it came down to the very last couple of meters. We'll see what happens here with the men, the US, Korea, Canada, and Germany. In the U.S., Korea, and Canada are three of the four teams I expect to see in the final in Vancouver. China is notably missing. Germany's not usually in the final in this event, but they managed to squeeze in. A bit of history, 2006 Olympic Games, Korea the gold, Canada the silver, the United States the bronze. So while Anthony Labello started, Apollo Ono's on the track right now. The skaters on the track right now who are about to push, those were the fastest skaters from each team. They'll be coming out seven more times, but they'll also be the ones anchoring. How important is getting a good push, or is it pretty much the same every time? It's not at all the same every time. <laughs> it's incredibly important, and it takes so much practice to get these exchanges right. These guys are making it look, it look easy. But the skaters on the inside of the track, it's so much practice and timing to build up to speed so that when you get out there for the track, you're at the same speed as the skater that was on the track, and you can get a nice clean push that actually builds speed. If you come out with no speed, it's like pushing a brick wall and you lose a lot of speed. And with 38 laps left, at what percentage are these guys skating? Right? These guys are still taking it easy. One and a half laps at a time doesn't take a lot out of you. One exchange, two exchanges of that, it's not too tiring. It's just doing this eight times. Apollo will be out there eight different times. That's when it starts to get tiring at the end. Korea ranked number one in the world coming into the weekend. Canada number two, China number three. The United States with the early lead, 10 laps in. Canada in second, Korea third. And with this many laps to go, position isn't incredibly important. It doesn't matter if you're in first or second. Any of these teams could still win. They're trying to conserve energy and have clean exchanges. It's so easy with so many skaters on, a, on the track to miss an exchange or mess up an exchange. And if you miss an exchange and miss that push, that's when you can fall way behind. The United States continues to lead. Korea right there in second. Well, this is a much anticipated event. You can tell the crowd really into this one. Final event of the weekend. We've seen so many great races, and it comes down to this exciting relay that goes 45 laps. We're into the second third of it. And while in most races, you don't want to be in a front for such a long race, the 1500, for example. Because when you're in the front, you're not drafting. You're, the wind's hitting your face and the skaters behind get to draft off of you. In the relay, it's a little different. Some skaters, and I'm one of those, thinks that it's actually easier to skate from the front. And that's because whenever there's an exchange, the skater that pushes falls back up behind. And all the skaters in second, third, and fourth actually have to go around the skater that pushes. So here we see Labello just pushed Apollo. All the other skaters have to come inside of him. And this is... A little bit of a surprise. The U.S. seems to be pulling away a little bit. Apollo has really gone after it here. A great leg by him. The U.S. now with a sizable lead. Simon Cho out there for the U.S. And this is something these skaters practice day in and day out. 
just as a regular part of a workout. The, the US team uses warm-ups, relays to warm up. They use relays to cool down at the end of the day. And they use relays as interval work. So there's plenty of relay practice every day. 21 laps, so we're past the halfway point. That lead is now cut way back down. Korea, right on the shoulders of the United States. Here comes Apollo again. So with under 20 laps to go, now's the point where they do want to hold their position. Apollo's in first place. It's harder to pass in a relay than it is in a normal race. You only have a lap and a half per skater, so it's hard to set up passes. Simon Cho's in front now. He's going to want to hold the position. Korea making a move on the inside. They make the pass to so the Koreans in the lead at this exchange. Tight, tight, tight up front. 16 laps remain, it's Korea, then the U.S., then the Canadians. And luckily, the skater that went down there was the one from Korea who had just pushed, so it's only the skater on the track that matters, and Korea now seems to be pulling away. Anthony Labello's on the track. The U.S. will really need to make up some ground if they want to catch the Koreans. Korea has made a huge move at this stage of the race. The United States with a lot of ground to make up. And Apollo still seems to be relaxed. He's going to be the one anchoring. He's the one who's going to be needing to make up the ground. The other U.S. skaters will need to at least hold on if they're going to give Apollo a chance in his last two laps to make this gap. It's Korea followed by Canada. The United States a ways back now in third place. And Canada surges to the lead. Ten laps to go. Just over 1,000 meters left in this 5,000 meter event. And at this point, it's an all-out sprint. That said, these skaters are exhausted. They've been out there for over 30 laps. They're very tired, but they're now all going as hard as they can. Canada makes its push. Every team now up front, the top three, have all made a big surge. First the U.S., then Korea, and now Canada. Can somebody hawk down the Canadians? And right now on the ice are the fastest skaters from each team. Francois-Louis Tremblay from Canada broke the world record a few times in the 500 is out there, and Apollo. Apollo is going to be out there one more time, and that's to anchor the last two laps. Six laps remain. The Canadians, can they hold on to this large lead? Canada, followed by the United States, and then Korea. Less than four to go. This seems like a gap that's way too big for the U.S. to make up. I've never seen Canada pull away quite like this. Even Apollo, who's such a strong skater, seems to have been relaxing with two laps to go. I don't think he can make up this gap. Two laps remain. Canada, as long as they don't go down to the ice, they'll be okay. Although Ono doing everything he can. Apollo Ono. Skating as hard as he can on the final lap, but Canada, it's going to be too little too late for the U.S. The Canadians win. The United States gets the silver. Well, Apollo certainly made up some ground there. He <laughs> did. The U.S. has to be happy with that finish. This is the last time they might be racing with some of the Canadians. There are no more international competitions with the Koreans, the Chinese, and the Canadians. But the Canadians are close neighbors, so they might see them a little bit before the Olympics. The U.S. has to be happy with the medal, but the Canadians really did pull away there. As we check out the replays, Koreans in the lead at this stage. Canada, the U.S. fighting for it. There's the big pass from the Canadians to move into second place and then into the lead. And that was a great exchange there. That's where exchanges can make or break. They made it for the Canadians as they really pulled away on a well-timed exchange. And then the easy finish for Canada. Apollo with a great surge on his last leg, but not quite enough. The gold goes to Canada, silver to the U.S. Just seconds ago, you saw the men. Here they are on the podium with Korea, the bronze, the U.S., the silver, and Canada takes home gold. And they won it going away. Final thought on 
what we saw this weekend and what we have to look forward to with the games. The U.S. team can be happy because they know they can stick with any team that's out there. They beat the Koreans, which they hadn't done in relays all year so far in the World Cups. They can be on the podium, and they will be, in my opinion, in the relay in Vancouver.